Hi, welcome to my video. This is the first video in a multi-part series where I'm going to turn a Raspberry Pi into a NAS using Open Media Bolt. And along with Open Media Bolt, I plan to use Docker to then install Nextcloud as a Google Drive alternative and also PeeWeeGo as a Google Photos alternative. To get started, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. I have the Pi 4 4 gig model and an SD card. I have a 32 gig micro SD card. The first thing we're going to do is go to raspberrypi.org. Go to computers and then software and you'll need to install the Raspberry Pi imager so we can flash our micro SD card with an image of Pi to get started. Once you have it opened, you wanna go to choose OS and I like to erase it first just to make sure I have a clean SD card to work with. That S has been erased. We can go ahead and select Raspberry Pi OS and then select Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Choose our SD card and then write. Now that it's completed, we'll click on continue, remove the SD card and we're gonna reinsert it. Mine will automatically pop up, but if your X4 window did not open, you wanna go into your micro SD card folder, create a new text file, call it SSH and remove the extension. And what this is going to do is allow us to then SSH into the Raspberry Pi without having to physically have access to it with a mouse and keyboard. So now that's done, we're gonna remove it one more time. We're gonna insert the micro SD card now into our Raspberry Pi. We're going to boot it up. Because Raspberry Pi Lite is the CLI version, the boot up process should be fairly quick. While that's booting up, we wanna go ahead and open up our SSH client. I am using PowerShell with the SSH commands pre-installed. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and SSH into a Raspberry Pi. If you don't know what the IP address will be for your Raspberry Pi, you just want to go into your router, look at your client list, and identify which IP address is associated to your Pi. It should say Raspberry or Raspberry Pi as the client name. Uh, because I know which one it is already, I'm just going to go ahead and SSH into it. Now, if you don't know, SSH is the command to initiate uh, the call, and then pi is the username by default, and this is the IP address. Now, because I've SSH'd into this pi before, if you get this message, what you'll want to do is type in SSH keygen dash R and the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, and that's going to remove the key from your computer. And if I rerun that command, it will now ask me if I'm sure I want to establish my connection. I'll say yes. The password by default is Raspberry. And now we're in. Now that we're in, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and do an update. And an upgrade to our Pi. We'll give that a moment to run. All right, once that's completed, we're gonna run one more command here before we reboot. 
sudo rmf. And all we're doing is just removing this file. This is optional, I believe, uh, but I'm gonna do it just because the guide that I'm following from Make Tech Easier uh, has indicated to do so. So we'll run that and then we'll just do a reboot. All right, so that's the first thing we need to do is to get Raspberry Pi Lite installed and that step's completed. Once uh, the machine is booted back up again, which should be now, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, SSH back into the Raspberry Pi and then install Open Media Vault. Uh, so to do that, we're going to SSH back into the Pi. I didn't mention this before, but I'll mention it now uh, because we are still using the default password of Raspberry. Uh, there is a security warning here indicating that we should probably go ahead and update our password uh, to a new password. We'll do that at a later time. Uh, for now though, what we're going to do is then run this command and it's going to grab the repo from GitHub for your open media vault. And this is gonna take some time. So I'll come back when this is completed and we'll go ahead and start from there. All right, now that it's completed, and the system is now rebooting. Uh, we now have Open Media Vault installed on our machine. So the next thing we can do, we don't need the terminal anymore, but instead uh, we'll go ahead now and open up our web browser and we'll navigate to our Raspberry Pi. And here is Open Media Vault. So by default, Open Media Vault, we have admin as our username and our password is Open Media Vault. We're going to want to do a couple of things here first. Uh, the original guide, if you were to follow it, um, they have some outdated terminology. So if you were to follow that guide, it's referring to general settings. Uh, that's just going to be workbench under system. And the first thing we want to do here is change the auto logout to one day. So that way, as you're working on this and you step away for a minute and come back, the system isn't going to log you out. Uh, this is unfortunate, especially if you haven't saved your changes yet. So we'll go to make this a one day auto logout. We'll go ahead and save that. And we'll apply the changes. Once that's done, next thing we want to do is go to our settings and change our password. So we'll go ahead and put in a new password and save that. Um, if we go back into system, go into date and time, uh, you want to go ahead and update this to wherever your local time zone is. For me, that's going to be America, New York. those changes all right we got this from the repo so I don't expect there to be any new updates but if you wanted to check that you go to update management updates and click on the search icon and it's going to look for any new updates that are available uh, so you'd want to do this periodically once you have it set up but as of right now uh, again I would suspect that there's nothing to display and no data all right, um, so the next we want to do is go ahead and prepare our storage devices. Uh, so I have my three disks of eight terabytes on a USB storage. So I'll turn that on now while that's warming up. I'm going to go down to storage and then disks. And there we go. 
we've got three drives of eight terabytes each. And we'll go ahead and wipe these. Do a quick wipe. Once it's done, click on close. And now we will go down to the file systems. And there's nothing to display here because we have not mounted any of these drives. So we'll go to create this drive here because that's the one we wiped and we'll keep it on ext4. And we'll create this file system. Okay, now that that's completed, we'll click on close. And now we can go ahead and mount that system. So we'll mount the first one, which is A. And just so we can make sure that everything is working, we can go into smart, look at devices, and we'll see here that all of our drives here are in good status with temperatures. So Open Media Vault can detect that information uh, through that smart system. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do here is now create users and assign privileges. So what we're gonna do is go into user management and go to users. I'm going to create a new user and I'll create my information. So this is the username. I'll just use my first name. And then here for the groups, what we're gonna do is go ahead and select root, sudo, and ssh. And we'll do Samba share. Click on save. And we'll apply all the changes we've made so far, which is the mounting of the drives and also the creation of the user account. All right, so now we're gonna create some shared folders here. And so for the first one, we'll just call it media have that on the A drive. That's the path. We'll allow everyone to read and write. And we'll save it. Let's check out the privileges here. And for myself, I'm going to say read and write. Next one, we're going to go into services and then SMB. Let's just update this to my work group. We're going to share the media folder. Guest allowed. Let's see this. And apply 
apply the changes. All right, and if everything is done correctly, we should be able to see that over our network. All right, so I missed one step. Um, I had to work through in order for the folders to show on the Windows 10 machine. So let me walk through that real quick and then I'll show you some additional things that I've done. We go into SMB and under the settings, uh, we have work group in here, which I don't think actually does anything, but uh, I have this one here as Sitjar. The other one was work group before I save this. So I'm not going to save this one just so you can see the difference. Uh, but when you go in shares, uh, I now have two folders, a media folder and a public folder. When you go into media, I did not select inherit permissions initially, which it's now selected. Um, and then if I go back into public and edit this one, it's the same thing here. Uh, so they're both enabled. Inherit permissions are on both. Uh, one other thing that I did do was under user management, um, I did enable home directory for public and that's been saved. So now when I go into my Windows 10, I go into network, you can now see Raspberry Pi as being available. When you open that, there is now a media folder that is empty and a public folder. So to recap, we did two major things. The first was get Raspberry Pi OS installed. The second one was get OMV installed. In order for us to get Raspberry Pi, we needed to wipe our micro SD card and flash Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Once that was completed, we moved that SD card into the Raspberry Pi and SSH'd into the Pi, did an update and an upgrade. We ran a single command to then install OMB. Once OMB was installed, we then configured OMB, set up the storage devices, allowed the users, and then we confirmed that we were able to see those folders in Windows 10. I hope this was informative. I have more videos to come. Look out for my next videos where I will install Docker and Nextcloud. And also using Docker, I will install PeeWeeGo. Thanks for watching.